Yeah, I suppose that's a challenge to us. Um, what we've tried to do this year is bring in better quality players. It seems, you know, the perception out there is that we've signed loads of players. Actually, we, we have probably one less than we had last year, believe it or not. It's just that, um, you know, certain guys have moved on. and um, But obviously the people that have come in have probably been more high profile. And the way we look at it is that we needed to have a better squad, more strength and depth, more more challenges for places. And I suppose the, 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 the key thing is trying to see that if a player is missing through suspension, injury, loss of form, that the fellow comes in is just as good. So... Um, Overall, our squad, I'm happy with, with the way it's shaped up. Um, the element of surprise, yeah, I suppose it's a challenge to us because um, I think you know, in the last third of last season, the element of surprise was gone and you could see in Turner's Cross, we ended up winning quite a few games 1-0 because a lot of teams came down to, and decided not to come out to play, to try and hit us on the counter-attack. So I think, you know, even last season, it had crept in by the end of, by the, end of the season. But um, yeah, certainly, so I suppose that's the challenge for us. To, to see can we uh, drive on this year a lot of experience came in as well over the close season but it's good to see young lads like Gavin on your left you know you obviously had him here Mark to, to get a, get him into the squad and yeah. as well as two other players Kieran Gillelli as well well I suppose if you if you look at it you know, there's a lot of talk that we've got a, an experience in an older team if, if you look at what we've done um, Gavin is 22 Carol Shepard is 24 Kieran Jalali is 24. Okay, we signed Dave Mulcahy, who was 36, and we brought in Alan Bennett, who was 33. So he gained three years there. Okay, so the only other player was obviously the one player that we did lose at the time that we wanted to try and keep was Garrod, and Garrod went out and Liam came in. You know, and to be fair, at the time when Garrod left, we didn't think Liam was in the, in the situation, but they ended up losing Garrod, who was a fantastic player for us, but they get a player who was played with Ireland, Man United, and you know, Sunderland and Celtic at the top of the game, you know, was it was a big coup for us. So, bar that, you know, the whole age group. If you look at the lads, the young guys, the lads that came in, they've just replaced the lads like Dave O'Leary, and Turner, Darren Murphy, who was twenty eight guys who just aren't here this year. So, you know, if, if anything, it's it's a situation where the age profile of the team is probably similar. The difference is is that we probably brought in bigger names, you know, and I suppose if you look at it that. Um, Gavin is a young man starting off had been at Hull came back home um, got a bit of got his break with Draw the last year and done well he's, he's settled back into full time training he hasn't trained full time since he's come back home in two years you know I think he's enjoying it I think he can see playing with better guys and making him a better player and we, we've, we've um, you know huge expectations from, from, from Gavin throughout the season um, same with Karen Jalali who we all know is a fantastic footballer just needs to make sure that he's fit from the start of the season, which, which is what we're trying to do with him at the moment. And uh, Carl Shepherd, who we believe is a fantastic striker and is really doing well for us in pre-season and you know, maybe didn't see eye to eye or didn't get a proper run last year, has an opportunity this year to stake, a, st stake his claim. Um, so Liam Miller, we don't need to say anything about him. We all know who he is. And um, obviously bringing in Benno, don't need to say anything about him. He's been here as captain of the club. He's won leagues, cups. He's fitted back in since he walked in the door last week as if he never left. And we need him to show his experience and his will to win and his drive. And again, another Cork guy, which is crucial for us down here because you need to have most of your players need to be from the Cork area and then the outside fellas that can, that can fill in and, and uh, blend in with the team. Alan, welcome home. Um, can you talk us through the timeline of how you came back? Did you approach John or did John approach you to come back? Um, we spoke... We've been speaking anyway since since John took over as Cork City manager. Um, obviously, I was back training in June with the lads during the mid off season break in England, um, and then it just it just came about probably Monday of last week. Really, Rory and John got on to me, and I went and spoke then to Wimbledon because that was the the major hurdle. Like it would be Wimbledon and my contract and how that would work, and had an open conversation with Neil Ardley and. We just it just it just went from there then really. Once he said that he wouldn't stand in my way, it was a very easy decision, you know. Um, from there on, it was just tying up little things. So, probably wrapped up then by the end of the week, Friday, and he was done. And why is now the right time? Um, on the English side, there was a few variables there in terms of 
you know, because you, I, I was injured, I was coming back from injury, um, just a slight, slight quad strain, and that for three weeks, so I was out of the team. So he was saying, look, if spots, maybe, whatever happens, your opportunity, maybe, and and um, it was something I said all the way along. So he wasn't, he wasn't surprised when I said to him that I wanted to go to Cork. So he didn't, he knew all along there was something that I wanted to do eventually, and. I could easily have sat there till till June, you know, and maybe maybe come over in July then and enjoyed my summer. But I wanted to be here from the start. I wanted to be here from the, the first day from pre-season, um, to have a good go, good go, good go at the season, you know, and have no regrets that way. So just a combination of those those two things, and that's what made up my mind then. And John Allen's arrival creates a lot of competition at centre half, which is obviously what you want. Absolutely, I suppose. Not only that, you know, I suppose if if you look at if you look at us, even last season. Um, centre back was you know was, was a tight area for us. Obviously Dan and Darren Denny played most of the games. Michael filled in a bit. Gavin Cavanagh filled in a bit. Gavin has gone. Um, plus the fact the left side of defence has been a bit of a, a problem with us. Uh, we had Earl Gavin. He's gone. We brought Ross in. Half which were last season Ross did really well. But at the same time, you know it gives us real options because all of a sudden we have we have Alan that can come in and compete with the three lads. We also have an option now where Darren can go to left back. You know, Ross can play at left wing. So all of a sudden, our left side of the park from 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 me, it's it's all after filling up. So we have, we have opportunities that we can. We have lots of options where the left side was probably the one area last year we were very slacking. And I suppose if you look at the final day of the season when we played um, Dundalk, Michael McSweeney, who did a very good job on the night, and and, and Darren Mina end up playing left back. So it wasn't the ideal situation because Ross was out injured. So at least it gives us more options. It's certainly more, more competition. But to be fair, um, you know, Benno has come back in to play. You know, he, he's, he's after coming home that he wants to play, wants to be part of it. And it just, it ups the ante. And um, you can see since Liam has come in, since Benno has come in, training has been fantastic because guys can see the real quality that's, that's there. And um, it's raised the standard across the board. And that's what we want. And I suppose... Look at the bottom line is we're here to try and make sure as a club that we can stay at the top, compete at the top. Huge challenges for us because, you know, obviously Pat's Dundalk, Rover, Sligo, they've all invested as well and um, huge challenges for us. But, you know, at the same time, we know if we can stay up there, the crowds are going to be fantastic and um, it's all about winning trophies and that's what we're hoping to do and the more Alan Bennett's we have, the better. Um, Alan, so what would be the highlight of your playing career over in England? Um, been selected my country. Um, won a league with, with Brentford, which was good. Playoff final with Cheltenham, which was nice. Um, just just the opportunity to go over, I suppose, and, and play at the highest level possible was, was something I couldn't turn down. And those two those two things really would have been good days, yeah. And the day. You played Liverpool recently in the FA Cup. Was that another? Yeah, they're they're just they're just bonuses, you know. They're little bonuses on top of what you do week to week in the league, and we played Spurs as well, and Everton, and and, and Liverpool, as you said. So they're just they're just added bonuses into 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 what you do day in day out. Sorry, John, would there be any more trialists coming in between you know, in the start of the season? Trialists? I doubt it. I'd say you've talked to Timmy Murphy there, he'd probably shoot me. <laughs> and um, I'd say no, no. It's it's um I suppose looking at the start of the year, we're back we back pre season training. We also brought in Gavin, Cairn, Shep, these lads. Dave Mall had been signed, something arose with Dave's work and he actually never trained with us at all. And uh, he, was, he was very busy to work commitments. So, so I had known for probably about a couple of weeks ago that there was probably an issue with Dave that he may not commit because he told me that. And obviously that's where, where, where Alan came along and it happened very quickly. Liam Miller, something similar very happened. Um, it wasn't like I'd been speaking to Liam Miller three or four months ago. It just happened quickly. He was coming home. I think what people need to understand, I think anyone in the room here from Cork can understand, and I said that when Liam was signed, a lot of Cork lads see themselves when they go away as coming back. The crucial thing for us is getting them back at the right time when they have something to offer us. And I believe getting Liam back, Alan back, we've got them at a time where they still have quite a few years 
football, same same when Colin came back. And um, but the thing about the, the Cork lads is that they want to come back. You know what I mean? They they see themselves coming back home, obviously maybe their families and stuff like that. And um, so that's that's why it's huge. It's a huge benefit for for us to get these get get these guys back and get them back in time where they can contribute for a couple of seasons. You know what I mean? And I suppose um, that's why I think it's a real coup for us to get Benno back because you know, he's fitted in straight away. You can see it training. He's still a lot, an awful lot of years left in him. You see, there's a myth going out there that, you know, when you're over 30, it's time to retire. You know, you look at Paul O'Connell. What age is Paul O'Connell? 36. Mm -hmm. And he's playing a game where you run into the wall every day of the week. You know, and he's, you know, you, you look at him. So, like, we have guys who are you know, look after themselves, superb condition. And, you know, our oldest player is Colin Healy. Colin is 35, arguably last season. Was he probably one of the best players in the, in the league? Was he our best player? He certainly was up there. So he's 35, looks after him fantastically. All oh, these guys are two or three years younger than him. You know what I mean? So age is only, it, 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 it's a mindset in that sort of people want to write you off and want to, want to have that story to say he's gone or whatever. You know, loads of top players play till 36, 37. And, and in some cases, particularly for a goalkeeper, if you're a centre back, you know what I mean? If you're a centre midfield holding player, you can probably play longer because it's different, it's different. You're reading the situation. Maybe if you're an all energy type of guy that you're playing as a centre forward and, and you're relying on your pace and stuff like that, that might might change when you get to 34, 35. But um, the age profile of our team is, is fantastic because we have the experienced, mainly Cork lads who have all hard, on, hard, hard, hard to play with the club and really want to do it. And then we have the young guys who have come in, like Gavin, who he might be here for the next 10 years. We don't know, he may not. But it's it's you know we've had lots of young fellas who've come into, into, into this club who stayed here for their careers. You know, Johnny Dunleavy is our captain. You know, I, I, if you asked Johnny Dunleavy four, four years ago, would he still have thought he'd be in Cork? He'd have probably said no. He could possibly be here for the next 10 years. You know, so um, so the spread of, uh, throughout our team from the younger to the older guys is good because the older players we have in our squad have fantastic attitude. When you have older guys with great attitude, it's fantastic as a manager. And we have all that. We don't have bad eggs, and that's, that's very important. Gavin, as a Kilkenny man, are you getting much of a hard time going uh, down to Cork? Because there's a bit of a rivalry in it. Not, not, as, much, no, not <laughs> as much as I, I thought I would now. Uh, I know all the boys have been brilliant and all welcome. And jo Janet obviously stressed that when we had spoke before I had signed that that was a great bunch of lads down there. Um, and that's something I wanted to be a part of. But I knew the minute I came in, there was no egos, there was no... There was no clicks, there was nothing, everyone was together and uh, you could see that obviously in, in the performances last year as well. Gavin, what is the perception of Cork City now, from outside of Cork, in terms of when you were when John approached it and said, will you come to Cork City? Has that perception changed dramatically in the last yeah, few well, years? Yeah, well... The amount of Dublin players that have come to Cork mm -hmm. in the last 12, 18 months yeah. would be phenomenal in comparison to before. Yeah, well I had kind of, I had always kind of said to myself that if, if Cork had, had come in for me at the end of the season, that was going to be the one that was going to be hard to turn down. Um, obviously, just after the season, like they had um, the history of the club and uh, obviously hearing, hearing how good John is and um, the squad that, that was down here, I knew that they wanted to build and, and obviously desperately on looking at to to, uh, to win the league last year. And I knew that uh, John and, and the rest of the lads would want to push on next year and that was something I really, really wanted to be a part of. Like. John, with the amount of midfield competition that's there now, is it is that something that you really want? I mean, is Gavin going to be a major player to that? Or are you going to have to move players around? Or are you going to keep it the same way it was last year? Pretty much. What way was it last year? <laughs> <laughs> Four or five one. Well, it, it, it's... 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 Um, it's um, yeah, absolutely. Gavin's young fella coming through. Um, we see massive potential in him. Um, can score goals, uh, very unlike in the Gary Buckley mould. And I think, you know, you need to ask Gavin, I think since he comes to training this year, I think he's seen, you know, this is good, this is proper training, this is fantastic. And, you know, he, trying to, he came back from England, 
he's hoping that maybe next couple of years that maybe he might get another opportunity to go to go further again. What he probably needs to, to do is be a regular in the team and be played at the top level in, in this country. And I think learning from the likes of Colin Healy, Millers, these guys, he's learning every day. Um, do I see him being a big part of the team this year? Absolutely. Because we have a massive amount of matches this year and we're going to have massive competition. And will the team change from week to week? Of course it will. You know, because the competitions, you know, we've ended up with Satanta Cup in Europe with your extra games that we didn't have last year. Um, so absolutely, but I was, you know, I wasn't signing Gavin Hoolan, you know, not to be involved, and he knows that. Uh, but at the same time, we've we've changed him around in a few positions already in training and throughout the team because I could see a guy like him, he's his fitness is fantastic, his attitude is fantastic, his tremendous ability. We could play in quite a few positions, so we've been moving around. Brian Lennon went to England to the Premiership as a right back. Twelve months ago, no one would have said he would have been a right back. You know, so we have players that we've been juggling around. We've been playing Gary Buckley last year, played midfield. He had played at centre back. We played him on the right side. You know, because he's he's athletic. He can play in lots of positions because he's very skillful. So um, and we're doing the same with Gavin. So I, you could see Gavin playing in a few different positions. But certainly he'll be involved all season and he should play, in my opinion, to keep working hard, he'll play in an awful lot of matches this year. John, are the Cups just as important as the league? Um, I think everyone knows you like the league as your, as your number one, but at the same time, you know, if you were fortunate enough to get a day out in the Aviva for an FAI Cup final, I think from... A, you know, a player's point of view, you look forward to something like that. So, um, you know, the League Cup, Stanford Cups, probably, to be fair, wouldn't have the same importance. But still, it's nice to be competitive. It's nice to see can you win those trophies. But ultimately, you know, over here, you know, the League and the FAI Cup are the two that, you know, you, 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 you'd like to, if you can win any of them. I suppose the League is number one and probably the FAI is number two. And John, did the fact that the likes of Adam and Liam would have had experience playing European football, did that have a bearing in bringing them in with a view to the, the summer? If I'm being honest, no. Okay. Um, what appealed to me was who they were, what what had they offered the team. At the end of the day, I didn't sign Alan Bennett. Um, <coughs> from the point of view that I signed Alan Bennett because I wanted Alan Bennett because I saw a role he can play in the club. So um, there have been other former players out there who've, who've tried to come back to the club and we've decided not to sign them last year, this year, because we felt they weren't players in the positions that could offer us anything. You know, so Alan Bennett was signed for a reason because we expect Alan Bennett to show leadership, to be in the team, to make us a better team. Same with Liam Miller. So... Um, I suppose the bottom line is if Gerard Morrissey hadn't, wasn't in Cambridge would we have signed Liam? Probably not because we'd have no budget being blunt and Alan knows this and I'd spoken to Alan originally we were talking about maybe come the break when his contract finished come in he always knew I was keen on him if Dave Mackay hadn't gone Dave Mackay freed the facility to bring Alan in. So um, ultimately at the end of the day, this club is run by the supporters. You have to play within the budgets. You know, we all know that. They're the guidelines. And you have to juggle and whatever. So a few things worked out to bring the likes of Alan and Liam in. We're thrilled because, you know, I'm thrilled because they're both very experienced players. They've so much to offer. Was Europe the main thing? Absolutely not. You know, the, the bread and butter in Ireland is league of, the, the league and while everyone loves the European occasion which, we, which, will, which will be great when it comes up we have to be ready from the start of the season to be competitive and up there in the league because if we're not we won't have the crowds and then the budgets will go down so um, and, and anyways we're all about winning so what, we're here, what are we here for we're here because we want the club to try and win trophies and that's what he wants that's what he wants that's what I want you know so um, so uh, that's the scenario. Um, do you think, or John, do you think that you've got a little bit more experience now going into this season after last year's uh, episode? 
we learn every day. You know, there hasn't been, there doesn't, there isn't a day goes by that, or a week goes by that, you pick up something, you change, you say change something different. But I suppose the big thing is, um, I think everyone knows the force members, the board, or supporters, anyone that has any interest in in, in soccer through Cork City and County know that from coming from where I was to, into this privileged job would know that I'm trying to do everything in my power to make it successful. And I keep saying, if I can, that's what I'm trying to achieve. If I can't, everyone will know I'll give them my best shot. So, um, but from an experience point of view, I'm a different manager than I was last year. Of course you are, you're different. Every week you change, you get different ideas. Um, you're always learning and um, I suppose you have, to be, you have to be willing to learn as well. And I suppose the other side of that is that when you bring in more experienced players and you bring in the likes of Liam Miller, you bring in Alan and guys who have who've played at different levels, you also learn from them. And, um, you know, I think the lads would see me as I am hands-on, so I would talk to them quite a bit, I would ask them a lot of questions. And, you know, so I, I see that I'm always willing to learn, but um, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's, it's about winning trophies and about making sure that we, we can stay at the top and be competitive and hopefully win a trophy. Um, no, I, as John was saying, it's it wasn't it wasn't one of the main reasons. No, um, obviously it, it's it's a bonus, and it's something that I think all very would like to experience is, is playing the European competition. Um, but like I said said before, it was just the thoughts of coming to it to a, such a big club like Cork. Um, it's arguably probably one of the biggest in the country. Um, and, and pushing on for, for leagues and cups next year obviously it haven't come so close this year that was probably the main reason of coming down like I said the European thing was just just a bonus really <coughs> and it would have been it easier to sign for Cork City if any other club uh, came in for you if the situation was uh, right for you um, if, if any other Irish club would come in yeah not, never an option wouldn't even wouldn't even think about it I was coming home, it was always going to be Cork. Um, if I was going to stay over, I probably would have just stayed in my contract and then seen, seen in the summer. But once um, once Cork got involved, it was a very easy decision. And Alan was moving from one supporter on club to another. Was that a factor as well? Did that make the move easier? Um, I've been asked a few times about that, yeah, and how the, the setups compare, and there's a lot of comparisons. and. Um, it probably is a good model, you know, to run a club like same in Wimbledon. They they came from nowhere and they built the club up and they were ripped apart by by greed and whatever and short sightedness and stuff like that. And they had to recreate as well a lot like Cork. So um, it's, it's the people, you know. It's all about, it's all about the people. It's all about the people involved. It's all about the volunteers. It's all about the supporters. Us lads can give them something good to shout about and that helps as well. But. Um, was it a factor? Probably not, but it was just it was just Cork City, the pull of Cork City. It was always something that I wanted to do and I'm really happy that it's come it's come about. John, just a slightly random one, you were talking about cups there. Traditionally you're in the Satanta Cup this year and traditionally over the last few years the Satanta Cup has sort of usually been in the next week or two, you know, the first few yes. rounds. The, the four clubs from the League of Ireland seems to be in the darkest of what's happened. The talk is that it may start in June because of the Irish League clubs want different yes. teams. Could you do, could you welcome a bit of clarity at this stage? Are you in the dark about it? What's, what's happening? Well, we understand in June that's going to be a, that day, we understand it's going to be a straight knockout. Mm. Um, I think from a League of Ireland point of view, it is disappointing that we haven't played any games in February. Um, and certainly that would have been our preference or my preference uh, from the club. Um, maybe, you know, maybe with the Standard Cup, it probably needs, probably, probably need to go back to the drawing board and re remodel it and maybe bring maybe more outside clubs involved and, and maybe try and um, um, make it more exciting or maybe make the image more exciting because at the moment it's certainly um, from a, from a, well, I would see a League of Ireland point of view, you'd have to ask the other League of Ireland managers. 
you know, the fact that there's no game in February doesn't make sense to me. But our understanding is it's going to be a knockout in June. Haven't got any confirmation on that, but that's that's my understanding. Because there was some talk about you know, the Irish League clubs wanted as a warm up for the European games. Yes. Which would suit them, I guess. But yes. You're going to have a busy enough schedule around that time anyway. It is, yeah. Right? There is also some talk about possibly playing some Tantacup Cup games during the League of Ireland summer. <coughs> yeah, we've heard that, and we've we've we, we've let our feelings, um, and and given our our our, our views up the up the line, um. It's uh, well. I, I, let me put this with you: anyone that that supports Irish soccer and is doing their best to promote and Sedan have done a lot of work and a lot of good work, you know. In, you know, and you can see even the televising our games and whatever they've given great coverage. Um, but probably what Sedan needs is probably to sit sit down more with ourselves and maybe see how can we grow this because initially when the Sedan Cup came in, in I think everyone agreed it was a great idea, but certainly at the moment. It, it, you can't have a situation where it only suits the Irish league clubs you know what I mean and they only use it because it's for their Europe and we're in the middle of a hectic see so you have to have some balance maybe the way forward is bring in maybe some more outside clubs you know there's opportunities from maybe team from Wales teams from Scotland maybe there's opportunities from team from some of the divisions in England you know but I think I think the potential and the whole model of the Santa Cup is a great idea and I think there's more scope there and certainly a lot more potential and we just probably need to see think more outside the box rather than just leaving it between north and south and letting maybe the northern clubs just decide that they only want to like if we remember last year Linfield and Clifton were didn't field teams you know so you know it does seem funny that all of a sudden everything is just going into the summer time so I think look let's 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 probably try and see what pans out this year and maybe have a retake next year and seeing can we maybe attract maybe more outside teams, you know, not maybe Scotland, Wales, maybe some teams in England and make it, you know, a bigger competition and maybe tie, tie some of the games into February, tie some of the games into, into July. We're all willing to, to do that because it's part of it. But certainly by having no games in February isn't suitable from a from from a, a League of Ireland point of view. I would think it's certainly not suitable from a Cork City point of view as the manager. John? Um, with your first competitive game on Saturday against Cope Wanderers, do you, I know it's only the month of Stephen Cup, do, but do you plan on putting out your strongest team and will the two lads be starting? Um, I, I do. I intend to put out a strong team um, simply because it's been very hard to get pre season games. Um, obviously, being in the Premier Division, you can't play a Premier Division team. Okay, and then in the, in the First Division, you're looking for games. We were fortunate enough that at Lone and Finn Harps gave us two games up the country last week and there were, there were two good games um, for us. Um, Wexford fell through, or if we don't want to play us, and we have COVID two weeks, it's very hard to get good quality games. And with no disrespect to anyone else, you know, we have been helped out by local clubs as well, but it's, you know, you need, you're going in to be competitive in a league where you're playing Sligo, Pats, and Roves, so you need to be trying to play teams at least are close to that um, Saturday is a is a, an awkward game for us because it's down in, in Cove Wanderers they have a lot of ex-League of Ireland players with them you know and, and uh, I believe they fancy themselves and you know they're talking themselves up they're going to give us a very good game so um, we'll certainly go with a strong team will the lads be involved I would imagine so I didn't know you last year John to go up in that competition so are we when you consider people would have said that's going to be your first trophy <laughs> There's no trophy easy, John, and I suppose, you know, a bit like everything else, I think the Munster Senior Cup, in my eyes, is a very good competition. You know, I think maybe there's more to it and there's more promoting of it. And maybe if it was run, maybe um, in conjunction with the pre-season, might be, might, might, might be better now, because even as in coming from the amateur side with Avondale and whatever, the Munster Senior Cup, when it was running into even March... And that a lot of senior league clubs, if they're unconventional for intermediate cups or leagues, didn't tend to put out their strongest team. And uh, when I was at Avondale, we actually went to a, a must see a cup final against Cork City. We lost 2 0. Yeah, 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 so, so well, we, 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 we have a bit to do. But to answer your question, John, did it disappoint me last year? It did. But it, because we played against Douglas Hall, all our fringe players. 
But the good thing, it showed that, looking back 12 months, it showed that our fringe players weren't good enough. And if you look at the team that played that day, most of them aren't with the club anymore. So it was a good wake-up call because it maybe gave them, maybe the players that played that day taught themselves they were better. You know what I mean? And Douglas Hall put it up to us and on the day they beat, they beat us fair and square. But uh, it showed me that day that we had, we had a big problem with strength and depth. And um, so um, certainly I would imagine we'll, we'll be much stronger this year. John, do you think the, the thinking of the Cup is so different? Because uh, you're on the League of Ireland side now compared to when you were with Avondale and maybe you got a tie maybe, I don't know, sometime in October or November compared to what you're doing now. Like where, say, where are you going to play Cove now, Dave, if everything to, uh, nothing to lose and all to win where you're the opposite? But that's 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 the beauty of this cup football. So, and that's why I suppose to answer the question, that's why Saturday going to Cove, we we'll feel a very strong team because um, uh, we know they want to have a go off us. We know they fancy themselves. They have a lot of ex league of Ireland players, and we need to go there and prepare properly. I suppose that the lads will tell you there's no competition that we go out not to win. I want to win every match, but sometimes you have to be realistic in that you can play the same team. All the, all, the, all the time, that's why with League Cup games, maybe Satanta Cup games, you chop and change a bit. But you're certainly hoping that the guys that come in will make a statement that they're good enough to, to, to be in your side. And going back to last year's Monster Senior Cup, the lads that were on the fringes, they hadn't played games and they were all knocking on the door looking to see could they be in the first team. So it was an opportunity to see could they step up to the mark and it proved at the time that they weren't. And a lot of players were very disappointed that day and subsequently the majority of them aren't with the club anymore because... I believe we, we have a much stronger squad now, um, better players. and um, But like every game we go out to play, competitive match. Um, I've never gone to a competitive match and wanted, wanted to lose anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, you know the pitfalls anyway uh, from uh, being with Avondale, you know, they're going to be a uh, cover, going to be up for a big time. Like I know the pitfalls being with Cork City as a player. You know, I, I remember. Uh, we were hotly fancy to win the cup, I think, in um, 97, 98, and Kilkenny came down. They were bombing the first division, and they beat us 2 1 and turned us across. So I've seen it all as a player, I've seen it as a manager, like everyone else has. But those experiences just make you stronger to hope that you can prevent be, be, being part of a shock.